Does this thing work? Check one, two. It's been a while. But man, what a good excuse. Uh, I'm just streaming here at the moment. MDP. Hey, Mitch. How you doing, man? Two things. Can you hear me and can you hear the strings? It's been a while since I've uh, done this. Hey, Alonzo. Ah, oh, awesome. I'm glad it's working. Hey, good to see you. Good to see more people jumping in. Yeah, this channel still exists. Believe it or not, the channel still exists. <laughs> I'm doing great. I'm doing really good, Mitchell. I've honestly had the busiest six months of my life. And I I quite literally got an, um, an email from... <laughs> From YouTube saying, uh, you haven't streamed or done anything on your channel in six months. We're going to stop you being able to make money from it. <laughs> I'm like, uh. So that's how inactive I've been outside. But it's good. I've been getting heaps of work, which is great. I'm actually really excited. I'm just going to give um, a couple minutes for some extra people to come in to see um, what's going on. So um, I'm just chilling at the moment, just pulled, pulling open the library. Super excited to even be able to talk about it, to be honest. Um, as if you don't know, I'm, I'm actually quite close friends with Jasper, who is behind Performance Samples. He's, it's pretty much a one-man shop. <laughs> and he's been working on this library for a long, long time. And if you're a fan of Performance Samples, this has been on your radar for a long, long time, I'm sure. Um, and... I've honestly been playing with this library for nearly a year <laughs> in various alpha and, and testing stages. Um, and to see everyone else finally get to try it is pretty amazing. I've been using it on projects all over the place. Um, if you've been seeing any trailers that I've worked on lately, this is Pacific's in it. I just finished a feature film that has Pacific all over it as well. I'm pretty excited about this one. Um, and I know JB's my friend and everything, but I'm, I can quite seriously say that this is the best commercial strings library. Yeah, the intro price level of beats will be will be out will be uh, there for months, which means, no stress, save up money if you need to. It's, it, I think it's there till the beginning of March or something. Don't quote me on that, but it's you've got time, which I think is great. So these violins, I often find myself just pulling open the legatos in this library and just doing exactly what I'm doing now. Uh, it's just so fun to play. And I think it's one of the few libraries where you can open up a legato patch and just play and not feel like you're having to sort of fight against the MIDI to try and make things work and avoid lumpiness and weird transitions and things like that. Uh, JB has just spent insane amounts of time finessing this. So on the violins, we might as well start talking about specifics. Um, I should dump some links somewhere, actually, to tell people I'm actually streaming. Oh, give me a second. The Legato feels the most responsive. Like, the Legato, CSS 
has uh, one of the biggest p- problems people tend to have with CSS, which, by the way, I think is a fantastic library is because of the fact that it's so consistently programmed and the legato is also quite smooth and sounds really expressive. Uh, but the biggest problem people tend to have with it is that it's... Um, well, there's two problems people tend to have with it, and that is that it's a bit laggy or there's an innate delay built into the legato, which doesn't bother people like me. I kind of just get used to it and, and work around it. But it can sometimes make it feel not as playable. The delay in Pacific is not as great as the delay in CSS. It's quite it's quite a lot less. Um, and the, uh, the other problem some people have with CSS is the recordings of each section sound a bit narrow in the stereo field and sometimes hard to fit into a mix. Um, let me talk to you quickly about what I'm doing to Pacific. Actually, let me, I'm getting sidetracked. Let me just quickly post first that I'm going, that I'm going live. <laughs> Give me one second. It's going to do a longer itch, intro, but I couldn't wait to, uh, couldn't wait to chat to y'all. Specifics, more like Pacifics, am I right? <laughs> Zach, well played. <laughs> to Pacific. Oh, Actually, sorry about that. The day has come. It has indeed. Going live now to fiddle with Pacific strings. All right, posting, posting on all my stuff. Give me a sec. Yeah, take my money, right? And the other, the other thing that I'm really kind of impressed at, to be honest, and again, big disclaimer, JB is a great friend of mine and has been for years. Uh, and I want to see him do well out of this because he deserves to, <laughs> to be honest, because this library is just insane. And And just so you know, I don't really go out online and shill libraries that I don't believe in. Um, you won't, uh, and I don't even do it for all of JB's libraries, <laughs> which is harsh considering he's my mate. But this is one a bit like Oceania that I'm shilling hard for because I just, I totally think that it's the best um, string library out there. All right, um, here we go. Violins 2 don't exist, and this might be a bit of a hot take, but I consider it my job to reproduce the sound of live orchestras with samples, and I think Violin 2 samples are very overrated. I don't use any Violin 2 samples in my on any of my work. Um, they're so easy to approximate and to fake, um, and I'll show you how I do it in a sec. All right, thank you for waiting. I think I've spammed the interwebs on my socials. All righty, all righty. Um, in Cubase or any any door, to, to to do to fake violins too. All I do is I hit this hard tune button, and I go minus two. It might be hard to see on 1080p. I'm sorry, but with just the in contact the raw tune knob. Whack it down two semitones, and then in the um, in your MIDI modifiers or on the channel in your door in Cubase, it has like a little um, a MIDI modifier where I can then transpose by semitones all inputs up to. So all my MIDI is going up to, all of my all of the samples sound down to, and it equals out to sound the same, but a slightly darker tone and texture, which by the way, violin twos, second violins actually do sound like. And then what I also tend to do is wind down the close mics a little bit, sometimes reposition them slightly differently as well. Uh, it's, they're not worth overthinking. It's, it's very, I, I see people complain about second violins all the time and I think it's, it's, not, it's not a problem. Um, Pacific is now a major part of my template. It's the uh, first time I've I've had to re to upset my strings part of my template in a long time actually. Um, it's 
a lot of string libraries have come out in the last six years, but this is the first one to make me actually change my template up quite a bit <laughs> or add to it at least. All right, just so you can hear those changes that I did to the violins. And that, and you can unis I unison the sections all the time um, with that trick, and it just it just works. It sounds great. No need to overthink it. All right, let's go. Let's go to one of the other sections. Actually, I should I should be very transparent here about what I'm doing. One second. Um, on a lot of libraries, I tend to just apply a broad EQ to the whole room, so to the whole bus or the master channel of the of that library. I do the same on on Pacific. I've got a broad EQ that I use. It's very rare that I don't use something. Uh, let me just show you what it is, one sec. Bear with me a second here. All right, here we go. All right, this may look aggressive to some people. It's really not. It's actually pretty subtle. Uh, well, I'm doing a, I'll even show you the exact settings that I'm doing. Here's specific raw without anything. And it still sounds nice. It sounds kind of rather warm and sort of full. Let's see. And I've applied some EQ to reduce some of some congestion. Well, basically opening up the sound. I'm reducing some low mids around 450. You can even copy these settings if you want at 7 dB. There's the cue if you want to pause the video later. Um, and some slight high mids around 2.5K, which I tend to do in a lot of samples. And then a slight high boost to open up way up reaching past audible levels. Um, and then I'm just chucking on cinematic rooms really low, uh, the wet, the direct, the wet mix is minus nine DB and the preset I'm using is just called score stage. I mean, it sounds good. Um, not overthinking that either. So Jasper <clears throat> really did do a good job on the legato on this library. It just it just works um, really well. Now the other thing that I do that I tend to do to the sound as well is that the image is quite in the center in the stereo, like all the patches sound in the center, and the close mics have been intentionally left in center like that. They are in. Oh wow, what's that? Ah, oh, thanks, Jeff. Um, <laughs> I should probably get rid of that. It's a bit annoying, isn't it? Um, I tend to pan the closer mics a bit. Here's what the close mics sound like by themselves. Usually the purpose of close mics is to try and um, solidify the stereo image. So I'm going to actually solidify them in their natural positioning where they would normally be to the left and where they were recorded in the AB mic. Um, and then I would usually too, I'm going to have to figure out how to turn that off. Sorry. But, um, I usually then drop the volume of the close mic a little bit as well, but this is all to taste. You can do whatever you want. Here's the AB mic by itself. And you'll hear on the top dynamic of the violins in particular is like a portamento almost, like a half portamento, which is pretty cool. There's a lot of dynamics in this library and it's probably good 
to remind yourself not to hang out on that top dynamic all the time because it's just a very expressive, very hard digging in layer. So usually I'll hang out around 75 and if, if I play intervals around there, 75 on the mod wheel that is. They're very just smooth, connected, very playable. If I go up higher, you hear them sliding into the note more, which you can use to your advantage. That's very cool. Um, yeah, so the, the, the legato is fantastic. Um, let me bring the close mics back in. Also, same note legato. Hold, hold down the sustain pedal. Can I remove that? One sec. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see if that worked. Um, so by holding down the sustain pedal and playing a repeated note, you're triggering same note legato, which, okay, so the alert's gone, but the sound's not. Okay, I'll figure it out one day. Um, so pretty impressive stuff. Uh, I'm sure you probably want to hear more things, but I could just play these violins all day. Uh, the, the really impressive thing about this library, I think is the soft dynamics as well. just as smooth as the as as the high dynamics and really expressive as well so good all right let's listen to some violas um i'm just using that same eq across the whole pacific bus that i showed you before and that same verb as well like oh my goodness how can you not like that is the volume of the strings okay um, oh, that just sounds incredible. I, whenever I play violas, I automatically go to their lowest octave because that's just where they sound the sexiest, right? Tell me that's not amazing. Ah, uh, it's and it's so fun to play. I'm not having to deal with big latency or anything. It just sounds so good. And I'm I'm not like I'm not playing intervals at a certain speed to try and make the intervals sound better. I'm throwing I'm just playing stuff. Like it just it just works. It's very flexible. Even though it doesn't have round robin legatos, because it has so much expressiveness in the dynamics, by just keeping dynamic variation in there with the mod wheel, you can play repeated phrases very, and quite fast repeated phrases pretty well. Oh, that sound is beautiful. Close mics by itself. I know people want to hear that. So here I've turned the close mics down 6 dB just because I didn't want them in my face as much. I just, I, I strongly believe that relying on further mics, mics that are further away provides a much more natural sound, as, particularly when you're trying to blend things together. Um... It's pretty, it's, it's, it just does so much work for you. <laughs> Everything just blends without really trying. If you're trying to use just close mics all the time, you actually have a really hard job of getting a cohesive mix. Um, oh, these violas are so good. The high range sounds great as well. It, um,
Sign of a good patch is when you just want to keep playing it. You just want to keep playing the damn thing. So good. Oh, 10,000 subs. I didn't notice. Thanks for pointing that out, Michael. That's awesome. Thank you, everybody, for following a dude who posts once or twice a year. <laughs> Much respect and love. But if you just focus on the sound quality, like the mics just sound very nice to me. Like it's not too hyper narrow and weird. It just sounds, I can hear where they are on the stage, but it's diffused and has depth and dimension, which means it's just going to fit and sound expensive, <laughs> basically. Um, all right. Cellos. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry about that sub noise, guys. Let me turn it up a little bit. Cello's, again, just as good as the rest. Like, there's no weakness. And, Jay, I'll be honest with you. I'll give you a bit of an inside scoop. JB was saying, these cellos, they're not going to be that as good as the violins and the violas. By the time he was done with them, I think they're actually one of my favorite things of the whole library. Um Can you hear how I'm changing speeds and stuff? And it just holds up. It just holds up. Doesn't sound weird and go crazy. Not having to carefully do any surgery to make it work. Ah, JB, you're a legend. A rare Blaker stream. Totally. Very rare. Um... Yeah, I'll make this available for people to just watch on my channel afterwards because of this, you know, so people can see from the beginning what what the broad EQ is that I used over the whole thing and, and all that as well. Um, slow, yeah. By the way, yeah, I'm, it sounds sick. If you want, if ask me to do anything and I'll and I'll do it, except take my clothes off, all right? <laughs> uh, so. Uh, Forster just asked if I could do a slow fade in with the mod wheel. Wow. I, I'm sorry, I just want to keep playing. I just want to keep playing. I'm going to turn the library up because I think I'm too loud, aren't I? Let's go back to the violins for a bit. Yeah, so Riderus, I've got a mod wheel here, so I'm controlling the dynamics and the and the uh, with that mod wheel as I'm playing. But it's all in real time. I'm just I'm just mucking around, just jamming, warts and all. Um, oh, what? So. With the violins in particular, high dynamics have that kind of half portamento thing going on. If I play that without the top layer. I just get strong, confident playing. But it goes one higher again. Oh, 
which other libraries struggle to do, if I'm totally honest. Ah, it's so good. Um, yeah, it's just amazing. Uh, yeah, feel free to throw requests at me. I'm going to spend quite a while on these legatos. That's not because the rest of the library is 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 not as good. In fact, I think other parts of the library are potentially even better than the legatos. And that's because of, number one, the consistency in um, JB's programming. The dude has spent way too long trying to get everything, timing of all the spiccatos and all the short notes. Or there's no, there's no, yeah, it's, you got to play it to, to understand, but yeah. Um, I'll show the what the settings that I'm using one more time and then people can rewind if they want to. Um, so full disclaimer, I'm showing you everything that I'm doing here. I'm using this EQ over everything that you're hearing right now. A low mid cut right there. I don't know if you can see it. You might have to zoom in or something. 440 hertz, minus 7 dB. 2.6-ish, minus 4 dB. Narrower cut. And then a really broad, just high boost. Um, and then I'm just using a really light reverb, cinematic rooms, minus 9 dB, dry, wet, dry with cinematic room score stage hall. No no mucking around. I've just that's all I've done. I'm I'm when I get to the short articulations, I'm gonna turn that reverb off um and show you a few tricks as well. Um Yeah the Batman theme with these shellers would sound pretty awesome, eh? This video will be uploaded after stream, even though it's gonna be really rough and boring for people. Uh, let's go back to the cellos just because. Here's some repeated intervals. Excuse my plan. <laughs> it's just very nice. Violas. Sorry, I should have this interface open so you can see. Streaming noob here, streaming noob, noob alert. Here's some more repeated notes. You will get machine gun if you just do the exact same thing with the exact same dynamics. But you will with any library, right? So the whole point is if you want to do that, think musically about it. Players aren't going to do it identical the same. They're going to adjust their timing slightly. Their dynamics will change slightly. Passionata is also very good. Sometimes I feel like I need to fight against the intervals a little bit. It's recorded very differently, which is kind of nice because it sounds very different, meaning that they don't really, I mean, I don't really consider them to compete against each other. In fact, I like them both for different things. I find if you want something that sounds a bit more con like controlled and pristine and a bit more upright and stuff like that, um, a Passionata can be quite good. This I find a little bit more inspiring to play just because it's so fun to play and it just sounds good without mucking around and more expressive, I think, maybe. Just uh, a lot of performance samples libraries tend to go next level with expression, which I think is important with samples considering we're trying to fool people into thinking that it's real. Um, I actually think 
exaggerating things is usually the way to go with, with pretty much everything because once it's all mixed and put into a song, it all tends to kind of uh, speak better, I think. And this has no problem mixing with libraries. Uh, and I, I look another hot take. I see a lot of people complaining about how hard it is to match libraries, and to some extent, I agree. Particularly with CSS, I find that harder, and I think it's because I find it just more of a forward sound. Things that sound forward and pristine, or, or, or like or narrow, forward and narrow is hard to sit together because it calls attention to itself all the time. And and we actually don't want these things to call attention to themselves. We want them to just sit together and to actually blend together. And 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 that's why I think far mics are so important and why I really like how this has been recorded. The close mics offer really nice presence here. Here's the close mics just by themselves again. That's my reverb on there as well, though. Let me turn that off. You could get a really cool vintage sound with just using the close mics and no verbs and stuff like that. But that's a that's a very the way those close mics are being recorded is not narrow and kind of pokey. It's still got nice diffusion and and directionality. Um Yeah, Vista's got heaps of movement in it. And to be honest, for my preference, I find Vista to be too over the top. <laughs> but in saying that, it kind of made it the perfect library to layer in with other libraries and bring in just out of this world expressiveness. Whereas I feel like this library is a workhorse library. It's like, no, this is going to be my main library. It's not just for layering. This is, this is the real deal. Um, all right, let's explore some other things. Bases. Surprisingly, the low end in this library is quite satisfying. Um, I don't know how, I don't know why, but that I, f I think that's kind of rare in string libraries. Usually it's quite muddy and sort of, um, how do I say it, kind of boxy. Whereas the low end when this comes in is quite consistent. All right, let's let's go to some other articulations, shall we? Uh, uh, huh, uh, huh. Um, you're gonna have to bear with my playing, folks. I'm very, I very much rely on going in and editing MIDI afterwards because my playing's pretty bad. But we need to hear the library, right? Um, actually, you know what? Let's do this. I'm gonna show you. To demonstrate the pizzicatos and the spiccatos, rather than doing it section by section, I'm going to show you these bonus patches that JB's done, where it's like a full spread of all the sections all in one in a nice tidy patch. And I think that'll give you a really good idea of how the library and the sections blend together really well, uh, how they sound together, as well as hearing what these articulations sound like. So let's, let's pull them up. Let's do pizzicatos first. Yeah, and the bass, actually, and I'll point out the bass, listen to the bass frequencies in these patches as well. And this, like, it's super, it's kind of explosive almost, but not in an offensive way. All right, this is pizzicato. Okay, first of all, listen to the room. Let me turn my reverb off. Now, short articulations are where you're going to hear the actual room ambience the most, like by far the most. Even in just the close mics, you can still hear it quite a bit. 
Um, by the way, I think I found a bug, which I'll have to get JB to fix. But brilliantly, JB has included, much to my nagging, <laughs> a decay knob, which I think is probably the most overpowered thing in the sample world. And the reason for that is... I think I think that this room buildup in short articulations gets out of control, starts to build up in an actually unnatural way. Um, Um, and by winding down the decay, I feel like it simulates what having a full orchestra of bodies in the room would do, where the decay isn't really as long and as noticeable and as pronounced as it is in samples, as it is in live recordings. So the decay, all this does is it just chops off. It makes the room decay a bit faster, right? And because it's a fade, it doesn't sound unnatural. I think this doesn't work in these full patches, but it does work. It does work in everything else. I just need to get JB to fix this. But I might as well show you how I hack it. Um, select all the groups. Yep. They're all selected. Simple. And at the release, I'm going to drag it down to about 2K so you can hear what I'm talking about. Hear how you've still got all the good things about a room. You've still got diffusion. You've still got depth. You've still got dimension. But the trail doesn't, the washiness doesn't stay, which is great because it means we get the, the best with no compromise. Fantastic. I'll wind that open up a bit more to around somewhere around there. So these pizzicatos. Are by far my favorite pizzas out of any library. Might turn my verb back on now that I've controlled it. I've controlled the ambience of the room a bit. And that should match nicely with the ambience that I get on the legato patches as well, with just the same whole reverb over everything. Oh, that sounds so good. Like, just very fun to play. And I won't get into all the settings and stuff, but you can, if you feel like there's too much, JB has left a lot of room at the start of each sample, which means you actually get the whole sound of the players starting to pluck the note, which is where a lot of just the organic life is in, in the sound. So these can feel a little more delayed or laggy to play, which I my brain, I think, tends to compensate for pretty well. But you can adjust the offset here and you can make it as snappy as you want. But just be warned that it will compromise the sound a little bit, make it sound a little more fake, I guess. Uh, I like the default settings. Let's listen to the clo close mics by themselves here. Oh, that's with verb on, sorry. Let me take the verb off. That's pretty great, eh? That is... Oh, and if you want to get it even... If you want to get it to sound even closer, just dial the release back even more. By the way, you shouldn't have to go into the instrument to do this. You should just be able to dial this decay knob. But on these ensemble patches where everything's spread across one patch, this isn't working yet. Um, is there tighter patches as in fluid shorts? Yeah, there is. Craig, as an absolute musical noob, this has been supremely enjoyable. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> um, and yeah, 
the the echo does tend to snowball, like the room sound tends to snowball and just add up to something that doesn't sound natural. So that's why I love this decay. Um, all right, let's have a look at something else. Let's have a look at the spiccatos. All right, here we go. What's something else? And I'm going to do the same thing here. Normally, I'll just wind this decay down to control the room a little bit. Oh, is this actually working here? Oh, it is. Yeah. <laughs> so it must just be that one patch. So I would... All right, full open. That's no verb. That's just the sound of the samples. Which is fine if you're just playing notes like that. But if you're doing... Venu, um, I, I covered this uh, at the very beginning. The reason it, it sounds centered is because the close mics are at the same level volume-wise as the room mic, the AB. So the idea is, is that... Uh, and, the, and, then the, and the close mics are also centered, so you have total flexibility with what you want to do with them. So with these close mics, this is how they come sounding. I'm just going to go back to the violin. Sorry if I'm moving all over the place. I'm just trying to respond to questions as they come. Uh, and the violin close mics sound like this. So because that is at the same level as the room mic, it kind of tends to override the sound to make it sound centered. But all you need to do is wind down these close mics a little bit, pan these close mics a little bit to the left, which is what a real mixing engineer would do, right? And, um, and then when you mix it in, you can actually hear, uh, I'll move it, I'll leave it up at unity for now. Let me add my reverb back on. So you can get it to sound as panned as you want it. I don't suggest panning the AB mic or the, the room mic. Usually we try to leave that as is. You'll quickly run into problems with blending if you try to do that. But the close mics are, are recorded really well and give you total flexibility with how panned you want it to sound. Swing it out wide, turn it up, turn up the close mic if you want it to feel more directional. And but I tend to leave it down or a couple dB and and leave it panned a bit. All right, let me get back to the other patch. All right, so I'm hang I'm mucking around with just like the... We're talking about how I felt the room buildup was too much, which is where you can control the decay, make the room just fade out a bit. And I like to think of this as like a human body approximator. <laughs> if the room was full of people, it would probably sound more like this. Not this. But for some things, if you're doing a really wet thing that's that calls for that, then sure. But this is such a fantastic way of cleaning up things while still keeping the best uh, the best qu quality of having far mics and large rooms. Um, CPU and RAM, I'm not noticing any problems. All right, let's listen to the.
what's unique about this library is that just everything about it sounds good, is consistent, is recorded well, and it's just fun to play. Not many libraries like that, to be honest. Um, okay, let's see. Where are my strings? Alrighty. Oh, check this out. One of my other favorite things about this is the way that the, um, I mean, the Mikados, oh, actually, yeah, the, I should show the Mikados first before I move on. Mikados are probably, this is a very unique thing about this library in that there's not many libraries where you can just play something. Normally this, what I'm about to play would probably take three different patches, a spiccato, a staccato and a marcato, and then you have to carefully blend them together. Um, The cool thing about this patch is it's very responsive if I play along. And listen to the way it stops when I take my finger off. <laughs> it's just like I'm it's like I'm conducting the players. <laughs> it's a very aggressive release. You can't find that on I don't think any other library that I know of anyway. But if I play short. It's actually like a proper staccato, um, staccato, like a longer short articulation, which is really cool. So, and everything in between. So you, it's very, just really fun to just bang out stuff. Very inspiring and it just sounds great. And these patches, the full patches show how all the sections blend together in a really kind of nice way. Let's turn the AB off and just listen to the close. Let's turn the release down a little, a little bit on this, see if it works on this patch. So very nice, very nice. Love it. Um, someone just asked, controlled with CC1 or velocity. So you actually have an option here to have either. So CC mode will let you actually then, if you want to, sculpt the long the dynamics. Um, oops, I turned both mics off. Which is cool. I mean, to have one patch that can do all that. And the, uh, sound, there's definitely round robin on here as well. I'm not machine gunning as stuff. And and I just love it. The recordings actually sound really good. Like listen to the bow attack and the cellos. It's quite consistent high end. There's not like harsh transients and it's not poking out in a really... Oh, that's aggressive. It's like, no, that's a, that's actually a pleasing aggressive. It sounds really kind of nice. Um, yeah, this will become a video, Ember Eyes. It's, it'll be a really bad video, but I'll leave it up for people to, to just see. I just wanted people to hear me just jam on it. Check this out, though. Let me go to the violins. Check out these trills. 
again, uh, this, every single thing about this is so good to me. Um, all right, let's do the same thing I did before with the close mics. I'm going to pan it a little bit and just turn it down a little bit. I'm just playing with violins here. The way the trills work is if I push one note down, nothing happens because trills are oscillating between two different notes. And in this library, you just have a, ch a choice between half a tone or a whole tone. And so you need to play both of the notes that you want it to oscillate between. So let's just do a semitone. Again, it's got really nice attacks on these trills. It's not just like a subtle, you know, trill. It's like a dig in and a dig out on the top dynamic, which is really, really fun. Like hear that, it's actually, it's got a lot of expression in the way it enters and exits the note. Or if I want to, I can use lower dynamics. And there's six dynamics in these trills, which is crazy. I'm pretty sure. The way that I check is I look at the number of voices. <laughs> and we've got two mic positions. And 12 voices divided by two mic positions is six dynamics. Yeah. So that's very fun. Uh, these, these, viol um, these trills are fantastic. Um, and then you've got fun things like this, Sordino Sustains. I mean, this is kind of cool. Uh, the dynamics in this, if I remember correctly, are insane. Uh, let's have a look. Let me, let me play one note. Guys, I've got 18 voices playing with one note and two microphone positions. Nine dynamics on these, <laughs> on these uh, violin, on these Sordino Sustains. Uh, for long articulations, I like to have my reverb back on. Very smooth. And guys, I'm not having to muck around to get this to sound like this. I'm using one EQ over the whole library that you're hearing right now and just slapping on minus 9 dB wet mix of, of uh, uh, here, I'll, let me turn it off. I'll turn both those things off. Here's the raw library. Oh, wow, the low dynamics on that sounds so good. Let me turn my EQ and stuff back on. That's nine dynamics right there. Juicy. Um, yeah, I don't blame you, Ryan, for thinking these are going to be replacing all your strings. And Greg, stop trolling. I'm pretty sure Lorne didn't join the chat. Great to have you here as always, though, Greg. <laughs> Is it as usable for you as Berlin strings or not enough articulations? I'll be honest with you, in all my work, the only articulations I use are right here. I don't dive into crazy weird articulations. I mean, you can do everything with legato, a good spiccato, a good marcato. Actually, they're the three, they're the three main things I use. Occasionally, I'll have like a tremolo in or maybe a trill. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not one to muck around with all sorts of weird extended articulations. They're fun. They're not what, what I would consider workhorse articulations. And they're not required of me to write most of the music that I, that I write at least. Um, and then, oh, the, trem the tremolos are great too. Yeah, check this out. All right, I'm going to pan that a little bit. 
close mic, turn it down a little bit. Alright, how many dynamics we got here? Eight dynamics on the trims. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. A little bit overboard there, don't you think, JB? Not complaining here. What are my thoughts on the FX patches? I'll I'll load them up next. I'll be honest, I don't think I've even tried them. <laughs> well, let's have a go. Oh, these are cellos, right. Wow. Ha oh. ha. How cool is that? It's not just like a weak tram. No, these are like really... You can make it subtle, but they've got just energy. So many dynamics. Oh, sorry. Yeah, the cellos. I thought they were violins. <laughs> My bad, y'all. My bad. Let's let's put these back on the room. To see what panning close mics does, it gives you the directionality of the section, reinforces the stereo image of the wide mics, of the room mics, but still keeps things connected because I'm not hard panning room mics because everything needs to be anchored somehow. And, and a lot of mistakes I find people make is they pan their room mics all over the place. I don't think they should touch them. You want to get creative with the width of your section. Do that with your close and your section mics. Um, yeah, it sounds alive. It does, and that's the way I feel about this library in general is it doesn't just feel like boring old samples. It's just, and it's, you're not having to work hard to get it either. I know I sound like a shill, but put it this way. You have, you, I don't. I haven't done this. I haven't made a video about Conmodo. I never made a video about Vista. I thought they were great libraries. I didn't necessarily think that they were like game changing. I I think this one's game changing, however. Um, and the other reason, I'll be honest, why I feel comfortable showing people like you guys this product is because I also believe the value for money with this is kind of insane. I don't know what JB's thinking. But um, this is a lot of work for a quite reasonable price. Um, so, yeah, these tremolos are great. Hear how consistent the tremolos are too? Like you don't hear players like trying to catch up and being slower or faster. Like... There's, there's consistency across this whole library, and you'll find that in, across the shorts as well as the longs. And, and that's the other thing. Top dynamic, start of the note, has an attack. And it also has a proper release as well. And these are things that I think people take for granted that add a lot to the realism of your productions that a lot of other libraries just can't do. Um, and people probably underestimate how much work it is to actually get that to happen. I'm a big fan of things that are easy to play that make you sound better than you are. And this is one of those. <laughs> yeah, 250 loyalty is just kind of insane. And yeah, that's right. They don't just fade off Zakinator. They, they actually end properly. They, it's like a statement. The, the ends of the notes are a proper statement. Um, yeah. And Pitch Bend will extend that release too, which is very cool. I think he did that in Oceania, Oceania as well. And that was so good. Check out some of this bonus content, guys. Uh, I don't know what JB's thinking, but some of these things I think should be sold as separate libraries. This is... Um, JB says it's supposed to be used as a layer to bring more sort of like detailed expression to a violin section, which I think it does a very good job at, but I just love the sound of it. All right, it's a violin. I'm going to pan it the close mic a little bit to the left. Um.
So fun to play. This is only one dynamic too, but the mod wheel adds enough dynamic to make it quite usable. Just three violins, so cool. And I actually kind of really like this harp as well. Uh, I'm gonna crank the close mic up a little bit on this one. Um. Let me pan it a little bit. Let me bring it down, bring up the AB. Hear how that just sounds at the back of the room now behind the violins or something like that. That's so cool. And this is just a freebie included. That's ridiculous. It's actually really hard, I find, for libraries to put sounds back that far without sounding like it's just lost in some kind of mud. And uh, it's what I really like about these recordings with Pacific in general. The harp shows it really well, but it happens with the strings too. That AB mic does a really good job of giving you depth while still, while, while not getting bloat, you know, like... And then if you want more definition, crank up the close mic. Let's pan it quite a lot like they do in a lot of scores. It's actually my new favourite harp, I think. I think this is going to become my new main harp. Uh, some people might not like... At the very front of the note, there is... You can hear just a tiny noise before the main note starts. It's like, but um, but um. And this is the way that they're sampled. They've been sampled sort of mid flow, which is why I think it sounds so natural when you get into a flow and you start playing. Uh, it's not like, uh, but by using sample offset 80 instead of 140, it cuts off some of that, it makes it much more clean. I just love the way the room sounds in that. It's so good. This isn't even a harp library. Come on. What the heck? All right, let's go back to some legatos. If you have any questions, do you want me to do any experiments with this? I'm probably going to be on for like another 10 or 15 minutes. I just wanted to do a really quick... Guys, here's the library with me just mucking around with it um, before I went to bed tonight. <laughs> Yeah, that harp does sound better than my dedicated harp libraries too. And it's not just like a weak one dynamic harp. It's got heaps of dynamics and stuff as well. It's like a proper, it's a proper legit harp. It's not, it's not cut down or cheapened in any way. Those violas are so good. Here's the close mic again, just for people who want to hear close. But I, I'm not using the library like that, but I know some people do. Let's listen, uh, someone asked about whisper sustains. Let's listen to the viola whisper sustains. We haven't heard those. Um, viola. No, not Komodo. Stuff that. Here we go. Violas. Sordino. Oh, whisper. 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 Not Sordino. 
How many um dynamics are in this? Five dynamics. Oh. Even just playing one note. Oh. Easy. Listen to the quiet dynamic. I just, nearly every patch, I just want to keep playing. Ooh, man, that's good. What do the cello whisper sustains sound like? So that's just a beautiful sound. All right, let's pan these right a bit. One of the hardest things I find about sustain patches is the note beginnings and the note endings. I don't know if you just heard what I played, but I didn't, wasn't even trying. And the note beginnings and the note endings, these whisper sustains are built for that stuff. Oh, so good. Folks, what you're hearing there is a lot of dynamics and a lot of mucking around in programming and post. I just want to play that line again. That was so fun. You know when not often I get goosebumps from just playing samples while I'm jamming, but that's that's just incredible. I was just mucking around with some viola legato while I held that sustain. Yeah. Thanks to whoever asked me to play whisper sustains. I nearly didn't even play them, but yeah. All right. Well, someone earlier asked me to try out the um, effects. I'm, I'm not expecting heaps from this. <laughs> Okay, so a bunch of short clusters. Um. You know what? Some kind of fun stuff there you could layer in for some special effects. Those whispered sustains. Oh, I know. I just want to keep... So you just hold down a chord with them and then just play some of the legato over the top and you've got an instant film score. And it sounds expensive. Ugh. So good. Um, so yeah, the, the cluster shorts and the, uh, rises. Oh yeah. That's probably the most useful stuff in string effects. 
nicer, like, Sol Pont ones as well. Different lengths. Different ranges. So, yeah, like, I wouldn't say, like, massively comprehensive, but enough in there to, like, have a bit of fun with, I reckon. Oh, man, I just want to keep playing those Whisper Sustains. One sec. <laughs> oh, those cellos, where are you? Whisper Sustains, come back to me. But I hope you can see why I'm excited about this. We got legatos in here that are solid, fun, predictable, short articulations that are just... Ju Let me go back to the um, that pizzicato patch, actually, because that was fun. Um... Pizzicatos. Um. Um, what do the whole section sustain, whisper sustain sound like? Pretty good, pretty, especially if you just wanted to get a good sketch down. There was something so good about just playing one section in a particular range, though, too. This has so much sort of raw emotion. This is the cellos. Oh, well, any final requests before I before I jump off? Feel free to shoot them through now. I'm just going to leave this up on YouTube as a really brutally raw look at Pacific. I know there's not a lot out there yet at the moment, but personally I find just really, um, you know, unfiltered looks at libraries like this the most valuable when I'm trying to decide whether it's for me or not. I think this is great. Um, the violins, all I've done is panned the close mics, which is all you should be doing, in my opinion. But do whatever you want. But that's what a real mixer would do, these close mics. That, um, so pan the close, leave the ABs alone. That's my opinion. And potentially drop the close mics a little bit as well. Um, if you're interested, at the start of this video, towards the start somewhere, I show... The, uh, a rough EQ and, and reverb that I've got across the whole thing. I've just set and forget it, and which I actually think does quite a lot to help it sound a bit more kind of produced right out of the box. Um. <laughs> oh.
like to hear basses a little bit? Sure. They're actually kind of pleasing. I actually don't use legato very much in basses. I kind of, because they're so big and clunky, they tend to sort of, every note's a bit of a labor and doing legato on basses is actually not that easy to do. So I tend to just. I do this on all my libraries. I just like using the sustains because I feel like it sounds more like what the players actually do. But there's definitely good legato in there. Um, the releases, if you want this library, you got it. You can get it right now. PerformanceSamples.com No, I didn't make it, but my good friend Jasper Blunk did. And he went above and beyond in this one. Um... So yeah, that's my rough look at this library. Any other requests? Film themes. I played some a bit earlier. If you can, you can um, rewind it and check it out. Well, guys, thanks for joining me tonight. I hope you enjoyed this little look. I'm going to play you out with... <laughs> my favorite patch one of my favorites at least is this whisper sustains on these cellos oh my gosh i'm going to crank the volume a little bit the harp's really good if you rewind about 10 minutes you'll see me playing with it Happy holidays, everyone. Ciao. Enjoy this library. If you're thinking about it, just get it. <laughs> See you guys.